Hi there, Phil Simborg, uh, USBGF Teaching Pro with a short tutorial on how I use Extreme Gammon for uh, looking at a checker play, a simple checker play. Uh, this came up uh, the other day. Uh, I had an opening 6-3. Um, um, let's start out with uh, assuming it's a money game, although it was a match with the score 11 away, 11 away, but pretty much the same thing. So I played a fairly standard 6-3. My opponent rolled a 5-2. And by the way, I'm right left clicking to move the, uh, well, let's start from the beginning. File, New, Setup Position. And since I want checker play instead of cube play, I do I select checker play. So anyway, I rolled a 6-3 a and moved this 6. And I'm left clicking to move the checkers. And I right click to move the blue checkers. He rolled a 5-2 and played like that. And then I rolled a 4-2 and I honestly wasn't that sure what to do. Should I make the 4 point or make the bar point? Uh, so first of all, I want you to give a little thought to what you think is the right play here. Okay, it's close so I don't feel too bad about not being sure. I'm going to hit the plus plus button. That rolls it out plays the game out about 360 times and then does a combination of other things after that and does variance reduction which means it ignores the jokers on both ends and gives you an answer that's fairly accurate and basically what it says and I hit click on the arrow so I can see the movement you could also just put it on the initial or you can see how it looks after the play is made by clicking on final I like the arrow and uh, the arrow says that you make your opponents 18 point but the difference is fairly small uh, the it's a, a .012 error which technically isn't an error according to the definition of an error is more than .02 uh, with the basic setting but it depends on how good you play if you're one of the best players in the world you're not happy making a .012 error this early in the game uh, I was also curious to know if this changes at different kinds of scores well there are four basically different types of scores that Extreme Gammon recognizes the unlimited game which is what we're on double match point, gammon save, and gammon go. Well let's take a look at double match point. That's when you both need one point to win the match and nobody uh, gets any benefit or harm from getting gammon. And the doubling cube will never be used. So uh, in this case the DMP play is the same play and the difference is pretty much the same. You make that point. I suspect if you're on gammon go, if you're at a score where you really need to win gammons, you need to play more aggressively. So I would make the four points. Let's see if that's right. Gammon go, which means that red is losing um, two away, one away, and it's Crawford. So if you win a gammon for red, you win the match. And losing a gammon doesn't matter. So it isn't that important to make an anchor to protect from getting gammon, and it's more important to make points in your inner board. So as I suspected, it was right but it's right by a lot. We're talking about a big difference now, 0.055 instead of these 0.01%, more like 5.5%. And on gammon save, as you would suspect, uh, you do want to protect from getting gammon and you make your opponent's bar point. So that's a good way of looking at a play from various scores. Now, I again, going back to the original position uh, of unlimited games uh, or money game, uh, and seeing that the answer is this close, in positions like this, usually plus plus is pretty good and you can rely on it. But the really the the best way to really be sure about a play and how big a difference there is in the play is to roll it out. So I hit the control button and highlight the top two plays, and I hit my rollout button. And the rollout's already been preset. I'm using three ply and uh, for checker play and XG roller for cube decisions and I generally roll it out 1,296 times. That's 36 times 36 and seems to be fairly standard and generally will give you a right answer. Now depending on the position, how much game there is to go, a rollout can take very little time or, or a lot of time. If it's a bear off at the very end, a rollout might take two or three seconds. This might take a couple of minutes. So 
uh, you can put it on your your computer on pause and come back uh, <laughs> or you can skip ahead and see the result but if you're impatient while you're watching you can also see how it's doing by left clicking on these bars and what I'm seeing is that the making the bar remain so far after 4950 games played it's still in first place and it's even more in first place it seems whoops now it's changing it's real close again so it's going back and forth but it's not changing which play and you'll see this uh, you'll see sometimes where XG++ is completely way off some kind of back game plays and some kind of more complex plays that Extreme Gammon++ plus plus just doesn't understand. You really have to play the game out to the end to see the effects of the play. So the rollout is the most definitive way and um, we used to think when we had Snowy that when Snowy rolled it out then we knew for sure the answer but some people pointed out that you can't rely on the rollout because it wasn't making every play correctly. It was making lots of wrong plays. Extreme Gammon is not making lots of wrong plays. It's making fewer wrong plays but certainly it isn't perfect as we'll find out every time there's an improvement in Extreme Gammon it proves that the last version was a little bit worse than the next version so someday maybe somebody will come up with something that's perfect uh, but I doubt it uh, but it's you can pretty well rely now after playing this game out for 140 times it's still uh, right to make the bar and by just a little bit not by a lot now again it could change but for my level of play I could care less uh, if it's uh, right by 0 0.001 or 0 0.012, I just know it's very close. And then if I made the other play, I went doing that bad. It's just okay to make the other play, uh, especially at my level of play, because I'm not playing where I'm trying to be perfect. And I, nobody is perfect. The best players are still having PRs of uh, 0 .0, you know, 2 or 3. Uh, so they're not. Per nobody's perfect, and I don't think anybody ever will be, including Extreme Gammon. Anyway, uh, this is how I evaluate. And look, it's getting actually closer and closer. It's less than less than one percent now. The difference between the two plays. So at this point, I would just give up and say, okay, uh, making the bars a little bit better, and I can cancel or I can just interrupt it. And by the way, this gives me an idea of how confident Extreme Gammon is in the in its rollout. Uh, this is kind of yellowish, which, as you can imagine, is not strongly confident. If it's really confident and it's really sure that it got the right answer, this would be a very dark green. That's the confidence level indicator. And also, when you put your hand over it uh, or your cursor over it, you can see pop up telling you what the confidence level is. And uh, the chances of it being the best play, uh, for example, of the, this turning out to be the best play is 31%. So that means that 69% of the time, roughly 68.1% of the time, it's likely that the first play will end up being the first play after we get to what it thinks is 100% confidence. I hope this gives you a little bit of insight into the use of XG. If you don't have XG and you're a USBGF member, you get a 20% discount on it going to extremegammon.com. Um, and... Uh, uh, it's well worth the money. It's the best tool out there. It's ten times faster than Snowy. Snowy is four hundred dollars. Extreme Gammon is around sixty. Uh, and um, there's a mobile app called XG Mobile that you can use on the uh, on iPhone, and it's being uh, worked on to be able to be available on Android. We have no idea how soon. Um, and I do also sell a video. Uh, contact me for $25 and I donate a portion of that to the USBGF um, and um, it, it's a tutorial that has been approved by uh, Xavier who is the developer of uh, uh, of Extreme Gammon and it takes you, it's a one hour roughly, that takes you through all of the settings and the use of, of this uh, very very fine uh, program. Hope this was helpful to you and by the way if you're not a member of the USBGF uh, join and you'll see about 150 videos and I post two or three uh, every week um, that uh, give you insights into how to use the program and how to understand backgammon both cube and checker play and I get a lot of help from outside experts as well so thanks for watching hope this was helpful or interesting to you and uh, maybe you learned something about this play. Maybe you didn't, but maybe you learned something about using Extreme Gammon. There's a tremendous amount of other tools that 
are available to us in Extreme Gammon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.